It is Fox Across America with Jimmy Fallon. They're playing American Woman by the guest. I don't even know if you could play this song anymore. Is it an American person? An American that? I don't even know what the rules are anymore in pop culture. It's a wild time to be a talk radio host. But joining me now to restore order, he's a superstar representative from the 17th Congressional District of Florida. I'm talking about Representative Greg Stubbe back on the show. Hey, man. Hey, how are you? Uh, good. Uh, I'm assuming you have not landed a home improvement sitcom yet. No. How you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling good. Um, the head's clear. The ligaments that I tore in my neck are a lot better. I wouldn't say they're 100%, but they're a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, I have like clotting in my lungs, which is why oh I haven't been able to make it to D.C. because I'm not cleared to fly till March. Mm -hmm. And then the pelvis is broken, and I get a scan on March 1st. Um, so hopefully that has healed by March 1st, and I can start doing progressive weight bearing. So right now the plan is to be in D.C., we have uh, two weeks in March. It's that second week I plan on being up. So wow. I'm excited to get back in the fight, and uh, I appreciate everybody's prayers and everybody reaching out. Yeah, we, we all had your back on Twitter. Uh, it was just such a shocking, crazy thing. And then I, of course, like my coping mechanism when things go sideways is I usually wind up laughing about them. And I harbor this suspicion when it comes to married people that some of us guys take out too much life insurance and our wives try to do us in. Can you confirm that there was no effort by the other Stubies? <laughs> well, it's funny that you say that because afterwards <laughs> I was like, well, you know, I, it's it's like a half a million dollar policy on me. <laughs> um, you could have paid off the house. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's a few of those conversations that happened. Yeah, good for uh, you. She just kind of smiled. And, and what's interesting is I don't remember what exactly happened. Thankfully, there was a witness, an Amazon driver that saw the whole thing go down. So... Um, and they couldn't find her. We actually have a media room, like a studio in the house that I can do TV hits and radio hits and that sort of thing. Well, when you're in here, it's completely soundproof. You can't hear what's going on outside. So wow. the Amazon driver actually came to the door and tried to get my wife and she didn't hear it. It wasn't probably 45 minutes mm -hmm. after I had fell. I'm on the way to the hospital before she even knew what was going on. Oh, my goodness. And by then she had disposed of the banana peel she placed on the roof. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. This is heavy stuff. Uh, Representative Greg Stubbe is on the phone, not formally accusing his wife of pushing him off the roof. But I got to be honest, danced around a little bit. No, I laugh because my I had the same realization as you. When you get married, you start a family. It is really funny that when we were doing like the life insurance thing and I was like a cab driver at the time, I'm like, I don't see any reason why like mine is like four times as much as yours. It makes you a little suspicious. That's all I'm saying. I, I don't want you to. I don't want you to taint the trial uh, if this thing goes further. Let's talk America. But I'm. I'm glad you're hanging in there. Is what I should say. Um, Thank you, and I appreciate it. Well, good. Well, you're still in better shape than the country. I mean, it's such a mess. I just really quickly, I wanted to talk to you about optics. Okay, Biden's over in Ukraine, and I understand none of us support Putin. We don't want to see him overtake Europe, but we would like some type of definition of what would constitute a victory if we're just going to keep Venmoing money over there. And I think a lot of people at a time when Biden is making them feel like such a priority feel like back here at home the optics are terrible because you haven't really seen a lot of love for east palestine from this administration no and it's yeah so and, and what's funny is i can get up a stairs better than president biden right now and i have crutches <laughs> oh, no um, i saw that video you know, got the piece of that but um yeah i mean it shows exactly where this administration's priorities are and it's not america yeah. it's not americans it's ukraine it's uh, a wide open southern border and millions of illegals streaming into our country. It's not the hardworking Americans that are in East Palestine that are literally can't go to their home or drink water because there was a train, train derailment. And the Secretary of Transportation, it's 40 days now since that's occurred. He hasn't shown up. And what's, what I've seen is a pattern with this administration is if there's enough noise, then eventually they acquiesce to the horribleness of the decisions that they make. So because even CNN and the like is like, uh, well, Mr. President, mate, why haven't you gone to East Palestine? It's like, okay, well, it's an afterthought after Ukraine to go there and visit the Americans that are that are truly struggling right now, both from a health perspective and being able to get in their homes and all the things that go with what happened there, and ignoring the southern border, ignoring the fact that 100,000 Americans a year are now dying from fentanyl that we know is coming across the southern border. And the most important thing for him is to fly to Ukraine, promise another $500 million, which brings the total amount to like 115 billion dollars that we've given the ukraine with no plan like you said like mm -hmm. what are we doing are we just venmoing money with no actual plan of what we're doing because 
the Russians aren't going to stop doing what they're doing unless they're just either completely defeated or they're successful in Ukraine. And there is nothing that this administration has put forth that gives you any assurance that there's any plan whatsoever as it relates to foreign affairs, specifically in Ukraine. And people like myself are sick and tired of, like you said, Venmoing money mm -hmm. to the tune of hundreds of billions of dollars when we've got our own challenges right here in America and America should come first. I agree a thousand percent. So we're talking to Representative Greg Stubbe from the great state of Florida. And I think that's the part I, that's so infuriating is they say, if you dare ask questions about this aid to Ukraine, they're like, what are you on Putin's side? What are you Putin puppet? No, that's not the point. It just seems like they're okay with an endless amount of war. And I don't see how that's sustainable given the amount of money we're spending and given the deterioration of conditions here in America. And anyone who tells you, oh, we can walk and chew gum at the same time, but we're not doing that, you know, when you talk about the border and everything in between. So, you know, it's my hope that enough people have made noise because you're right. They govern. It's really weird, but they govern to Twitter like they didn't make it down to the border. It took two years. Fentanyl was the num number right. one cause of adult death in the country. When they finally saw enough tweets, they made it down to the border. So is that what we're living in now? Are we just go is it government by Twitter? Yeah, it seems as though that that's kind of how this administration runs. I mean, they can't they can't just have law and order. They can't follow the laws. Um, they can't uh, just enforce the laws that have already been passed by Congress. And then they blame Congress for what's happening at the southern border, except the fact that they're ignoring the laws that Congress passed decades ago that wouldn't allow for any of this to be happening right now. And uh, then when enough pressure gets put on them on either the Twitterverse or on mainstream media, even when the Democrats are like, well, you know, we have Americans hurting in East Palestine. Maybe the president should go. Suddenly that changes their overall thinking and scheme because there's no plan. They have a far left progressive agenda and that's all they care about. If it's not climate change or if it's not a wide open southern border and allowing illegals to just flock into our border and a completely broken foreign affairs policy, then they don't really care until enough pressure is put on them like, okay, well, we'll just we'll just go do a, a, a show of face in East Palestine and just to, to say that we care about the American people. It's so funny because now we're being told that Pete Booty Judge is going to finally show up tomorrow because Trump was going today. And apparently Biden is going to FaceTime them from Poland if he hasn't already in the last hour to express his support, which is, again, that's not leadership. That's not action. That is very much reaction. Like, it's a scam. And and uh, I'm glad you're doing well enough to be able to diagnose this problem, man. You still got it, Stuby. That's all I wanted to say before I let you go. You still got it, champ. I appreciate it. I can still fight even though I'm standing on crutches. <laughs> all right. We'll keep doing it. We'll see you back in Washington, man. Be well.